In previous units, we had to assume that whenever an object was launched into the air, it was moving uh, in the absence of air resistance. So we ignored air resistance, which isn't always the case. Sometimes real-world objects do feel air resistance. So now we can use the work kinetic energy theorem to account for the air resistance and find the answer with air resistance included. So here's our example. A 12.0 kilogram block is launched straight up into the air from the ground at 20.5 meters per second. It feels air resistance on its way up and reaches a maximum height of 19.0 meters. First we have to find the average frictional, frictional air resistance force on the block. And then assuming the block feels that same force on the way down, we have to find how fast it's moving when it gets to the ground. All right, first thing we do is draw our free body diagram. If the block is moving up, well, the gravity force always pulls down. And if it's moving up, then the air resistance pushes it in the opposite direction, which is down. And this is true for, for you know any friction force uh, when the object is moving. So if an object is moving to the right on a surface, then the kinetic friction pushes left. Right? If an object is moving up in the presence of air resistance, then the friction force of air resistance pushes down. Later we'll see that when the block is falling back down, of course the air resistance pushes in the opposite direction. It pushes up. But here the object is moving up, so air resistance is down. Okay, F net we can see is the force of gravity, mg, plus the air resistance force. That's a plus sign. Doesn't look like it, does it? Okay, there we go. Now, we know we need to use the work kinetic energy theorem problem, and what I'm going to do is write it out, but instead of writing W net, I'm going to break it into F net D cos theta. And remember there, theta is the angle between the net force and distance. So already we can see if it's moving up and the net force is pulling down, because the net force is this down force plus this down force, so the net force is down, and it's moving up, which means the angle between up and down is 180 degrees. So cosine of theta, the theta is going to be 180, and the cosine of 180 is negative 1. Okay, we'll come back to that. On the right side, the net work is equal to the change in kinetic energy, which is the final Ke minus the initial. And this is how all of our problems with the work kinetic energy theorem start. You write out this equation. Now when the block reaches the maximum height, it stops moving. So the velocity is zero when it reaches its maximum height, and the final velocity then is zero. That makes this whole first term on the right side equal to zero. Okay, we're going to plug in for F net. Right? I'm going to plug in for F net, and then plug in for D. I'm going to plug in for cosine theta. This is zero, and then I'll have one half going to plug in for M and V. The net force is what I wrote down over here. And look at this. I'm going to plug in MG plus F air. Right? That's a downward net force. I do not plug in negative MG plus F air. You always plug in a positive value for the net force in this equation. And the reason is because work is a scalar. So you have to plug in the net force as a scalar, which means take the absolute value. Right? So mg, mg is positive. The force of air resistance will be positive. So when you plug this in here, yes, we are plugging in a positive F net, which is good. That's what we have to make sure we do, and we will do it. So here we go. Let's do it. mg plus F air. I plug in, I've just plugged in a, a value for F net or something for F net which is positive, so I'm good. The distance that the block travels, that's also got to be positive. So I plug in the positive 19 meters up it goes. <clears throat> now, as we said earlier, the distance is up, the net force is down, right, down. So the cosine of theta, well, 
theta is the angle between up and down, which is 180. And the cosine of 180 is negative 1. On the right side, I plug in the mass for the first parentheses. That's 12. And how fast is it moving when it's launched at the beginning, initially? 20.5. So we can solve for f air. Notice that you have to divide the left and right by 19 before you do anything else. The negative cancels on the left and right. The 1 half stays. That should just be canceling the negative. And once I, uh, once I do this, I'll have, to, I'll have to, well, let me write it out. I'll just write it out. So when you go into your calculator, you take 0.5 times 12 times 20.5 squared divided by 19. This comes to 132.7, dot, dot, dot. Don't leave off those extra decimal places. Don't early round, or round early, as it might also be called. <laughs> okay, the 19s on the left cancel. So the right side now gives m12 times g, 9.81, plus the unknown, the air force, air resistance force. Okay, so you can see that to find the air resistance force, you have to subtract 12 times 9.81. And if you like calculating things out in advance, that means we're going to subtract 117.72, which is equal to 12 times 9.81. All right, then. We do that. This is 0. And what does the air resistance equal? How many newtons does it push with? Let's see, 132.7105, blah, 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 minus 117. So 132 minus 117, ah, the air resistance force is 14.99 newtons. Now, rounding that with sig figs gives us 15.0, and that's our answer to part A. Part B says, let's say the block falls back to the ground. And now, it feels the force of gravity, and it feels the air resistance. Find how fast it's moving when it hits the ground. So we're going to use the same value that we just solved for, but we're going to use the unrounded value. When you take values and plug them back into equations, you use unrounded values. You only round when reporting the answer. Okay, this is another work kinetic energy theorem problem. So let's draw our free body diagram, since we know we'll need F net. As before, the block is being pulled down by gravity, mg. But now, if the block's moving down, well, the distance is down, so the resistive friction force is up. So now, air resistance pushes up instead of down. So it's different from the first situation we had in part A. Good. We know that friction force, it's 14.99. We know mg, it's 12 times 9.81. And we're using the kinetic, uh, the work kinetic energy theorem, which says that the net work, right, Fd cos theta, is equal to the change in kinetic energy. That's the final, mv final squared. And look at this. The initial velocity now is the velocity when the block is at its maximum height. So this is zero now in part b. In the first problem, part A, we just solved, the final was zero because we considered the final moment in time to be the block's maximum height. Now we're considering the next moment in time from when it's at the final height, the max height, to when it drops back to the ground. So this is the speed at the height, which is zero. So the whole kinetic energy term is zero. And over here, Vf is the speed when it hits the ground. Okay. So we plug in for F net again. Right? Plug in for F net. We're going to plug in for D. D will be 22. Oh, excuse me, 19. Let's see here. D is 19. We're going to... Oops. We're going to plug in for cosine of theta. And you can figure out what that will be. Uh, let's do it now. We have to make sure that we uh, 
plug in the angle between F net and D, right? So this block is accelerating down, which means that the net force is down, like that, right? In other words, mg is bigger in magnitude than the air force, the air resistance force. So the cosine of theta, well, f net is down, the distance is down, which makes theta 0 and cosine theta is 1. Okay. Now, <clears throat> for f net, we have to plug in mg minus air. Like that. Notice I have to make sure I'm plugging in a positive value for f net. And yes, mg is going to be bigger than the air resistance force. So this all will be positive and good. I've plugged in something positive for f net. That's good. Now I need to make sure I uh, finish the equation here. So on the right, we have m, which is 12. And we're solving for the final velocity. OK. You can plug in for m over here, 12 times 9.81 minus 14.99. Good. 19, oh, that's a weird bracket, is 6 times vf squared. And you solve for vf. I'll let you do the algebra there in solving. And what do we get? It comes to 12 times 9.81 minus 14.99, all times 19, divided by 6. Then you square root that, and it's 18.0. So the final speed is 18.0 meters per second. Ah, look at that. It's not moving as fast as it was at the beginning, right? Because air resistance slows it down on the way back down. So that's our final answer. Now there's one last thing I want to show here. Whenever, well, first let me say, we always had to be really careful when finding the angle between, an, between the distance and an individual force. So if we have a block on a ramp, right, there's all these individual forces which would be uh, different. They would have different angles with the distance of the block. So if the block's moving up, right, FA has some force, uh, some angle it makes with the distance D. The normal force makes a different angle with D. The friction force makes a different angle with D. The weight makes a different angle with D. We have to be really careful with our distance, our angles, whenever we're dealing with individual forces. We don't have to be that careful when we're finding the angle between the net force and the distance traveled. Here's why. The net force will always either make a 180 degree angle or a zero degree angle with the distance traveled, okay? So the net force is always either slowing the object down or speeding the object up. If the object is speeding up, then F net makes a zero degree angle with the distance. If the object is slowing down, then F net makes a 180 degree angle with the distance. And what this means is that you can write the equation for work kinetic energy theorem as, well, if it's speeding up, then theta is 0, and the cosine of theta is 1. So you could just write F net D. Let me add my F net. You could just write F net D. And then, so here we are, F net D times 1, because cosine of 0 is 1, equals ke final minus ke initial. So that's the work kinetic energy theorem. Whenever your block or your object or your person, whenever it's speeding up, that's the equation you can use. On the other hand, whenever the thing is slowing down, the block, the person, and so forth, the cosine of theta angle that we the cosine of theta, which we put right there in my box, it will always be equal to 1, uh, negative 1. And so you can just replace that term 
with a negative sign up front, like this. So there's the equation we use whenever the block is slowing down. And you can just use this as the work kinetic energy theorem for a speeding up situation. And here's the work kinetic energy theorem for the scenario where the object is slowing down. And the reason is because whenever it's speeding up, the angle is 0 and the cosine of 0 is 1. And whenever it's slowing down, the angle is 180, and the cosine of 180 is negative 1, which is why we have a negative sign out front. So use this trick when solving problems.